Cool. Thank you for this very long and lengthy and nice introduction. And I really hope that I can really satisfy your curiosity about as to why you know, we don't have any, uh, or what's so, there are so few cars, electric cars running right now. Um, but what I'm gonna focus on is really the materials aspects of lithium ion batteries. And this is a really nice example of what we do in our group. We first start with like different material systems. We try to tailor the, mo the morphologies of these materials. And the aim is to develop cells uh, shown here. And then of course, we always look toward the application and the application is not only uh, batteries for electric vehicles, but also here. I really like this because this is a graphic which combines art and science. It was published by uh, Nature Outlook as the cover page of their, of their publication in 2015. And here we see quite nicely someone standing at a window. And for me, this is the window of the future. And in the future, we have all these energy sources from renewable energy. So we have windmills, we have solar panels, and of course here we have the very famous electric cars. And what's making this window, this view into the future, is really then these batteries here. And I really like this caption here, powering the future. That's what we would like to do. But the first question is, okay, how do these uh, batteries work and why are they so promising? Why are we investing so much energy and time for these materials? Uh, so just about the battery itself, we have lithium ions and they move between the anode and cathode. Uh, during discharge processes, uh, the lithium ions move from the anode to the cathode side through the electrolyte. They release electrons and these electrons can perform work, which means, you know, drive the car. Um, and here we see some nice examples of the structure. So here comes the material science. We need uh, different structures which can uh, reversibly incorporate these lithium ions uh, during charge and discharge processes. And that's what we work on to develop new materials or to improve existing materials. So this is a nice roadmap, I think, of the choice of materials which we have currently to work with to develop our new uh, lithium-ion batteries. On the y-axis, we have the potential of these materials against lithium, and the x-axis, then the capacity. Uh, and the top left corner, we have our cathode materials, and we want them to have as high potentials as possible. And lower right, we have the anode materials. We want them to have really the, uh, the capacities. And what's very key, what's very important, is we want a, this, uh, a difference between these uh, potentials between the cathode and the anode, because this potential difference is related to our energy density of our materials, and we need really large energy densities to be able to drive 500 to 1,000 kilometers on one uh, uh, charge. Uh, currently, as the anode material, graphite is used. It has a capacity of about 339 uh, ampere hours per kilogram. Uh, but what would be really cool is to use other materials, metallic materials, um, we have a choice, um, because, and the reason why they're better is because um, they have higher capacities, that's one thing. Second thing is uh, their potentials with respect to lithium are a little bit higher than graphite, which means that you're gonna have much less issues with lithium plating, dendrite formation, and thermal runaways. So these issues with Samsung 7 galaxies, which you cannot uh, charge or discharge during flight now, if you, if you would replace those graphite uh, anodes with something like this, then you're gonna have much less issues. So that's our goal, yeah, to get the safety going. And we focus on tin as a choice of metal uh, material because it has an excellent capacity of three times that of graphite. So if you get, if you could get tin to work, we would be moving along the process of developing nice batteries. But of course, as with everything in science, there are some problems, and let's look at the problems with tin. So with tin, we have usually in our anode material tin particles, they look like this. And when we lithiate these particles, we find um, the formation of lithium-rich phases on the surface of these tin particles, and the lithium ions have to diffuse through these uh, regions. Problem is, these phases have huge volume expansion, so more than uh, approximately 300%, and they're brittle. So which means that you're gonna get cracks forming at the surfaces of these particles. And when you're finishing the lithiation, which means that when you've completely discharged your material, um, you have large cracks. And this is gonna be bad because you're gonna have um, loss of interparticular contacts, you're gonna have powder formation, and you're gonna really decrease your capacities and decrease your lifetimes of your materials. Um, but when we delithiated, um, what we saw, or at least what they saw in this really nice article is, 
that you have pores which form inside of the particles, but the particle retains its shape. Yeah? Which means for me, when I was thinking about, aha, uh -huh, what could we do? What's going to happen if we don't start with tin as an analog material, but start with the already lithiated material? Is that going to be some type of um, improvement? And that's what we work on. So we're trying to really avoid this volume expansion issues. Uh, but what we see here, actually, is how important it is to know which phases are forming when we, when we uh, lithiate these tin particles. So we have a conventional phase diagram showing temperature and composition. And once we lithiate these particles, we see formation of different phases, lithium-2, tin-5, lithium-10, lithium-7, SN3, and uh, other phases. So this means phase diagrams are important. Thermodynamics is very important to be able to characterize these materials very well. Now, if we look at the um, different types of phases which form, they're shown here, we look at the capacities of these phases, we see that, of course, the more you go to the left, the more lithium is stored, the higher your, 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 your charge and discharge capacity is going to be. So you want to work somewhere in this region. However, with the volume expansion, once you, we see that once we lithiate tin particles, we have a large volume change due to formation of this first phase. Then, uh, yeah, then the volume decreases again, then it rises again, and then it increases constantly. Yeah? So um, we, our postulation or hypothesis is that the formation of these two phases, lithium-2, SN5, and lithium-10, lead to drastic volume changes. This is really causing, this is the driving force for this crack formation and really bad properties. So we want to really start with the pre-lithiated materials and delithiate them, and then see if we can really improve or increase our capacity retentions. And we have a large material selection uh, in this region of the phase diagram where we can get different materials which are going to give us different capacities. So that's our job or goal in, the, in, in our group. And we like to combine our different, different methods. So we have to not only focus on analog materials, but also on the cathode materials. We do uh, modeling and simulation, so we try to get thermochemical data to be able to get uh, Gibbs energies of these phases. We simulate um, these systems, and at the same time, we make our test cells, and we perform electrochemical testing, cycling, cyclability lifetime uh, uh, tests, and we try to relate our modeling and simulation with the expectations, uh, at least with our testing performance. So that's our roadmap for integrated materials engineering of these uh, materials. So now I'm going to show the highlights, the things we've been able to accomplish in the last uh, two years since we started with this work. First thing is, why hasn't anyone done this before? It's because it's very difficult to get to make these lithium tin compounds. There's only a few groups doing this type of synthesis. The reason why is that lithium reacts with almost everything. So you have to do everything in a, inside of a, a glove box, argon filled glove box. So Second reason is we have to find suitable crucible materials, and we can only use tantalum because tant lithium does not react with tantalum. The third reason is lithium has a very high vapor pressure, so it's going to actually come out of your crucibles during uh, heat treatment, so you have to seal these crucibles effectively using arc welding. So we've developed this procedure. We have uh, been able to heat treat our samples to make these compounds. We characterize them. Um, we see that we can make them phase pure, and then we make our electrochemical cells. And this took about one year to build up this setup to make it working very well. Uh, highlight two, we try to investigate the amount of, to, to know how much lithium can be dissolved in this very important lithium-rich phase. It's more of an academic question, it was interesting for us. Um, this is the unit cell of this, of this compound, it has 416 uh, atoms per unit cell, and if you, have, if you put the lithium in it, then you have 432. And we did some really nice work, I think, um, to characterize how much lithium we can incorporate into the structure. We performed the thermochemical measurements on very sensitive calorimeters. Um, this can be used to characterize how much lithium is present in these compounds by by investigating the melting of lithium. It's very complex, and I don't need to go into detail, but with these very sensitive calorimeters, we were able to determine what the solubility of lithium is in this phase, and we've seen that you can actually introduce 3% more lithium in there. Then we've developed Gibbs energy functions, uh, compounds for these uh, materials, 
And um, we made our phase diagrams, and we can predict our electrochemical properties, open circuit voltages as a function of composition. That's all very cool. And then we start the electrochemical testing. We looked at our very first uh, tin batteries. We checked the depth of discharge, so how much lithium you can pump into your materials. And we've seen very uh, bad performance, as we expect, from these materials. And this is because we have, as we observed, crack formations and loss of contact. So then we started now uh, checking by making this compound, 7.3, lithiating and delithiating it. And we saw a dramatic increase improvement of our capacities, depths of discharge, but we still have issues with crack formation. But it's an improvement. And then we continue, we do lithium-7 SN3, um, and we, we then uh, lithiate it, so we discharge our particles by putting lithium in, into the particles, and we stay in this region, so we avoid this region of volume expansion. We stay in this region here, and we found wow, we could really further improve the capacities of these materials. Yeah? So this is a really nice improvement for us. And then, what we found is really cool, much better, is uh, once we started with a pre material, so we started with the lithium 17SN4, uh, where all the lithium is already inside, yeah? we removed the lithium, so you know, we, uh, we retain these expanded particles, and we cycle within this region here between 17.4 and 7.3, we had these dramatic increases in the, in the cyclability, the reverse, uh, reversible, how we can reversibly introduce lithium into our particles, and this is our particles here afterwards. So there's no cracks. So as to conclude, an outlook. What we've been able to do is take an existing system which has been very problematic in the literature, uh, which has been doing this all this time. You get powders, samples, very bad capacities in this way. We've been able to, by just tailoring the morphology, by starting with pre faded materials, by understanding the system, by looking at the thermodynamics and kinetics, we've been able to go to this case where you can reversibly introduce and remove lithium to really be able to get the uh, types of capacities which you would like to have. And also, very importantly, safety. So we're working on here looking at the safety issues. Um, we now have to try to develop, or we are working on concurrently on cathode materials which are compatible with these analog materials. This I will not show now because it's um, because of the short time. But we're definitely actively working on compatible cathode materials to be able to be used with these analog materials to really take, get out all the capacity out of these uh, materials. So, I would like to thank uh, the members of the group. Um, we're just about two years, two and a half years in this process. It's changing now, so people are going, postdocs are going, new ones are coming in, um, and you have new PhD students. It's also more mixed, so we have not only guys, but guys and, 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 and ladies now. So we're happy about that, we're happy about our development. We thank our funding, we like our, our lithium ion batteries, and I'm open for all questions, comments, or yeah, anything. Thank you.